Hi everyone, I am here with another video. Hopefully you can hear me speaking and it's not too low for you. Um, I am here with another Doodle Days, which is episode, uh, episode 2. And I pre-drew my image again here. So I'm hoping that this is an issue for you guys. Like I said, it really does cut down the time for me, so these videos aren't super, super long. And I really do like doing them in the slow motion so you can kind of see but I really am taking my time with these and putting you know it, it's not like I could fly through these completely I just wanted to um, share that with you guys that with these it is more of a relaxing meditative drawing and it's not like a this kind of sketching sketching idea um like a quick sketch which I mean yeah <laughs> hard to explain, but it is a meditative process, so you do take your time, you relax and you do it. You do not really have to think about what you're doing, you can kind of, in your mind, just follow your lines, and then once you get a sketch out, just say, if you want to think about the things you need to do for the day, you can, but you can just kind of zone out and follow the lines and kind of relax all the same time, maybe have a cup of tea or coffee or, you know, maybe Starbucks if that's your thing. Um, yeah. Anyway, here I'm just doing some basic designs, uh, outlining the circle, and I'm using, again, my precise B5 pens. Uh, these are what I have on hand. You could use just a regular old Bic pen. It, the materials really don't matter. It's just getting used to using a material. So you don't have to go out and spend $10 on a pen, $15, $20, even more if you like to see our card in pen. Um, so for couples and, you know, triple digits, maybe more. Me and myself, I'm fine with just a big pen, um, but for drawing, I really don't care for big pens all that much, only because sometimes I notice that the ink doesn't flow as well, and if it doesn't, then I start scratching my paper, and possibly for those holes in them. <laughs> so that's why I, I do like the hypo gels, or even, um, like, my favorite, honestly, or the ink pens with the nibs or um, even a fountain pen. And I may switch over and maybe start doing some fountain pen work. We'll have to see. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys really do like, you know, watching these. If you do want me to speed them up, I can try to do that. I'm still learning my editing software that I have recently, recently got my hands on. Um, but I'm hoping to be more active on my channel, and provided that I'm um, my health allows that, but I'm going to be more than I was at the Um, which was kind of long existence before. But yeah, I'm doing kind of like a world pattern that has like little beads and like pins. Um, I think it's kind of pretty cute. I really do like that. It kind of gives a little bit more definition to the picture. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear a lawnmower in the background. Um, my neighbor is actually out for the acid. I'm hoping that the um, audio software I have does not pick that up. It is actually a pretty good software, so I'm kind of, kind of scared that it may. <laughs> um, anyways, I have probably been going for, you know, gosh, like most anybody else. I mean, when you're little, you, you know, pick up a book and you're trainers, four pencils, markers, you know, the pens and things like that. shouldn't be. Um, I remember getting into that and maybe I did that when I was younger. Um, and it first started with pencils, and then later in life, it kind of, you know, like years ago, I got a hold of a Sharpie and, yeah. Thankfully, my friends were really good, and, you know, they explained to me that you don't do that, and I didn't do it again until I was a teen, and I had to initially shoot because we were going to the walls anyway. But, um, plus they liked my artwork at that time, so it was okay. Um, yeah, from the story, a whole other story in itself, and I could probably go on about that and the creative side, and my sisters as well, because they were all creative, and I think every single one of us probably decorated the room in my parents' room. <laughs> um, yeah. I was blessed. My kids did the same thing, you know, but I, I didn't know that. I mean, so good at you know, a little bit of paint can pretty much fix anything. <laughs> Alright, here we are doing some more deeper work. Um, I did do 
Now, forgive me, I don't know the technical names of any of these because I really don't follow Zen Tangle. Um, I kind of just do just repetitive designs over and over. Um, I have looked at a few Zen Tangle patterns and it was just like, I don't know, I guess maybe just how I am. I couldn't be bothered to sit and follow the steps and it was just too much for my mind. I'd rather just sit and just whatever kind of my hand does is what happens. And again, I'm sorry for the one more if you can hear it. My window is open, but it's kind of warm today and I really didn't want to close it. Um, but yeah, I, I just find my own patterns from my mind and kind of go with that. If I do, however, get stuck, I will stop the drawing. That's why I like to pencil sketch before and have it ready to go so I could just ink on camera because sometimes I'll sit there for hours. Well, not really. I'll sit there for like maybe 10 minutes and be like, okay, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do here. And then I'll have to get up and walk away. Um, and then I'll come back to it later and finish that. And then once I finish it or I feel that it's finished, then I'll come back and I'll do the inking process on it. If I were to sit and do it all in one sitting, it happens now and then, but it isn't something that I can do all the time. Um, so, yeah, I know I'm not unlike anybody else. Sometimes you just get like, the urge, the need to sketch, and you can bust the whole thing out. Other times, you only get like a tiny little section, and then you're like, hmm, yeah. And you feel like, well, that was pointless. <laughs> but that little bit can spark the creativity for another time. So I kind of doodle when I can, and then when I can't, that's when I'll sit, and, or I have time, that's when I'll sit and actually ink it up. Um, so to say, it is a finished work at that point. Because sometimes if I sit there and I just go right back in, like after I have done the graphic drawing of it, then sometimes I feel like I mess it up because my hand will just be like wanting to fly through it and just be like, okay, I know this line, I, I just did this, I can do this, and then I have like a really messed up the pattern. And it's okay to mess it up. It's just a sketch, it's a tangle, so it's, it can always be fixed to an extent. I hear so many people saying, oh yeah, it's always the same, it's always the same. Sometimes you can I have um, experienced that myself because I don't want to add other things to it. I feel like once it's done, it's kind of done, so yeah, I could color it in and make it black or whatever, so this way it looks like that, but then it looks so off to me because I do like a certain amount of balance to my sketches, but yeah, it's, I don't know, I think that sometimes it's a little too much when you add too much black because it takes too much from your table, especially if it doesn't have a lot of detail. The more detail it has, the, the more black you add to it actually really does give a lot of depth and it makes that detail really pop. Um, other times you need that black and it's a simple thing, but if you put, it all depends on the design. You'll see what I mean if you start doing your own. It'll be personal preference, honestly. And there are some times that I really like just the black line masters. So just how it is now. There's no dark depth of black in this yet. It's just kind of black, white, and kind of gray tones. So this way, the lines speak for themselves. They don't need the contrast to pop for them. Although you'll see that I, I keep wearing something. Um, but yeah, I, some of the patterns I'll use over and over. I'm sorry if I'm jumping around from topic to topic and <laughs> section to section. That's just kind of how my brain works. I don't think it ever has been to stay on track in any time. <laughs> but, um, like I said, it, I really do like doing different patterns, but sometimes a pattern will stick with you and you'll see yourself using this pattern kind of repetitively through um, a wide variety of you know, sketches in your panel. And it's okay. You don't have to have a different pattern in your drawing. 
you can make the same pattern in a different sort of way that you would like to do. Like here, see, it's more chevrons um, instead of doing a, like almost a lace pattern. And I would say I messed up there, but I really didn't. It, uh, it was intentional. I wanted your eye to draw to the white part here. I'm not going to actually cover it right now. <laughs> um, but I wanted your, your eye to draw to that section. So that's why there is a slight difference in it. Um, but here's the thing I've learned is that sometimes like that, people don't even pick up on that. They don't, they don't see that variation, that slight difference. So making little mistakes like that, if you want to consider that a mistake, wouldn't be picked up on like right away. That might be something where people just sit and look at it for a while because they get mesmerized or drawn in by your drums. But most of them, you're like, huh, I wonder if they meant to do that or if they messed up. But either way, it doesn't really take from the drawing. It actually um, gives it character. So to speak, you know, like we all have our own little quotes. And I think that also just makes it stand out just like that much more. And I do really like how this one came out, despite it's really not my favorite, but I do like it, however. Um, I do like the aspect that it actually gives you peace of mind. It's not like so overwhelming. It still looks like way too much going on. But I do like drawing the house so much detail and everything too. I'm just trying to find a balance between a medium amount of detail, so highly detailed and no detail. Because there are times where I do like the whole, you know, kids like coloring, don't care. It's the thicker lines to color in, so there's not so much detail. And I do like the adult style where there is so much detail that one, you know, coloring of the item could take multiple sections. So you'll have to sit down and do a little bit and then come back to the same one. Other things I want to be able to kind of have immediate satisfaction and show this, so to speak. I think that, you know, we all need that in our life at some point. You know, you need that immediate gratification that I did this. And I didn't have to spend weeks on the end on it or hours on the end on it. So that's why I'm trying to find the balance between heavy detail and you know, kids coloring it, for lack of better word. So this way you can get both the satisfaction and the detail you're looking for without kind of sacrificing the quality of your work. I'm not sure if anyone's enjoying this or not yet. I really hope you guys do. Um, I hope you try your own because it really is relaxing and sometimes it's a good break from, you know, like I love doing all kinds of fiber art. I love doing, you know, the crochet, the knitting, tatting. Um, I love drawing. I love doing digital art. But sometimes you don't have the faculties about you to and actually do the digital art because you don't want to look at a computer screen that long or it's a little too warm or you don't have the time to actually sit and focus and concentrate too much to work on a pattern for knitting a crochet or pattern. Um, and then if it's, you know, in the warmer months, you don't want that kids on your lap because they'll just add some extra heat on you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, besides some other things, I, I do like to do, um, like, the paper crafting. I don't really do a whole lot of paper crafting in the winter. Um, because I find it too cold and, you know, my joints and my fingers and whatnot kind of get a little stiff and I don't feel like it's um, as free, free motion as what I do have in the warmer parts of the year. So I will, I will do it on occasion, just not the throttle where I would happen to do more of the paper crafting during spring and summer, even fall sometimes. Kind of. um, but yeah, I, I did card making and scrapbooking and smash books and uh, 
Yeah, but he's, I mean, I did all kinds of stuff. Maybe something similar, kind of like the jack of all trades. But, um, yeah, I like to switch back and forth because, like anybody else, I mean, things can't kind of, I guess, repetitious and be old for me where I need to switch out so I don't get bored with one thing. Um, I don't have AD, ADD or ADHD or whatever. Um, I just like to switch things up. Um, my creativity plan. I don't want to lose the mojo or burn out. And I find that if I stick with one thing too long, I kind of get burnt on it and then I never want to work with that again. So my craft area will get rotated out and whatever I was working on too much kind of get shifted to the back and kind of forgot about. And I'm trying to find a balance where I don't do that. Um, I want to keep the flow and kind of honestly go through some of the things that I, you know, some of the crafts and the, and the items I have. I've got stickers, I've got the work planning. Now, I do that all the time. That I don't, doesn't get old to me. Um, because sometimes I highly decorate and sometimes I don't. So if there's anything that I, I mentioned or something that you'd like to see, if you'd like to see my planning videos, um, I could try to do that. Um, any of the other crafts that I'm into, you know, you know, just let me know in the comments below, you know, what you like, what you'd like to see, and I'll see if I can put some more together and put them up. Because I'd really like to not cater because I kind of want to do what I want to do anyway. But if there are certain things you're interested in, then I know to go ahead and make a video of those and I can put them out every now and then. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do really want to get more into the pen and ink side. Um, I really do love and miss the creative outlet with that. Um, I may even start doing some lettering again. I haven't done lettering in like, oh my god, years. But I still have some items, you know, that I used to have for that. I mean, I always have, you know, oh, some, some kind of paper around that I can use for lettering. And um, I have pens, of course. <laughs> so that's awesome. And I might as well start using what I have. And that's kind of my whole goal is to use up what I do have and kind of become more minimalistic with the items because I really don't want to have all this stuff laying around anymore. I mean, it's great to go in there and to kind of pick and choose almost like you're in your own little store. But at the same time, I kind of feel overwhelmed with, okay, I have all this um, scrapbooking stuff, all this, you know, paper and everything. It's like, now what do I want to do? And then I just kind of walk away from that section. I don't want to deal with it because it's just too many choices, I guess. Um, and I need more of a simplistic approach right now. At least right now in my life with everything <laughs> going on. But um I really do like the simplicity. It's a little bit easier. Um if I do have a yarn stash, that's fine because I do go through it. I just don't want like ten bins of yarn. Um so I do make um gifts for everybody, uh, you know, family and friends and I actually do donate stuff, um, especially patterns that I try out, and then, you know, it's like, well, I make so many hats because I really want to try the patterns, whatever, so I can donate them to my local food pantry, they can give them out to the children and their parents when they come in to, you know, uh, for the cooler months of the year, so that the kids actually get something out of it, too, besides food, and help the parents out, too, so to speak. I also have the adult size, so the adults will get to it. So, I mean, I think that that's an important thing is to give back. And I try to do that whenever I can. Um, we also have a clothing, like a thrift clothing store where they have like a bag sale, which I think is awesome for the people in the area that can't afford to go to the higher end stores or even Walmart or Target or Kmart or anything like that. They can go down there and they have bag sales. Um, I don't know if it's daily or it, it's at least once a week. And they get a garbage bag of clothes for $5. I, mean, I think that's really good. So I'll donate my items there. So this way, if someone needs the hats, the scarves, you know, whatever. And I also donate my clothes there. So 
do things that don't fit my family, then, you know, or, you know, myself or my family, when we go through and do our clean out, and we do our clean out every season, we take bags full of stuff down there, and we then for them to go ahead and they put them to store, and people can go through and pick what they want, which I think is awesome. So, I mean, look for something like that in your area, and, and it's an easy way to give back. Um, but yeah. So, I don't even remember how long I got it, but that's okay. Um, hopefully you've been able to hear everything I was saying, and I didn't get too low. Um, I do know that my voice will go in and out here with this software. I don't know if it's just because my headset is going, which I hope not, because it's not that old. Or if I just have a tendency to go quiet. So if I do, I am really sorry. I'm going to do my best to keep improving on these videos. It is a learning curve, so please, please bear with me. Um, and I hope you do like these, like I said. Um, if not, please just feel free to let me know if there's some way I can make it better. I'll do my best to increase. I know the lighting is not that great right now. Unfortunately, that's what I have to work with. Um, so I'm going to try some more. Um, I'm going to try some different ways and see if I can improve it somehow. Um, and let's see. You can see here, I think I'll go back and talk about the, the doodle, that I'm actually just using the same pen. Even though this is a thicker area, you can use a Sharpie. And I do have the thicker Sharpies and whatnot, but I really don't like the bleed through. And I didn't have a piece of paper close enough to me to stick in between the pages to absorb the excess ink so it doesn't bleed through to the next page. And I really want to keep this book pristine. I have <laughs> I have a serious issue with if I don't like something, I will tear it out of the book and then throw it away. And I'm trying to do away with that. I'm trying to keep everything I do intact in these books. Because if I tear one page out just because of bleed through, I am going to feel Completely, and I'm going to feel compelled that if I don't like something, uh, it's perfectly fine for me just to rip it out <laughs> But, um, this is the way I keep myself accountable. So, and I don't mind the lines showing up. You see, like, the streakiness. It's not a true dark black, like, around the area with the kind of swirls and curls, or what I called before, like, with the world with the balls in between. Um, I really don't mind those lines. Like I said, it gives it a it gives it more depth, more detail without actually having to do much more. Um, I do like the fine, crisp black background, however. So it, it's all up to preference. I really don't mind. Like I said, in this in this particular drawing, I I don't think it really affects it that much. Um, uh, so it, it's not like a masterpiece, like I should say. So it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. This is a uh, young thing. And most works of art, anyway, are not perfect. Um, everyone may see them as perfect, you know, and the artist may think it's crappy. Um, I mean, that's a perfect example of like Da Vinci and Picasso and Monet and Rembrandt and whatnot. They, you know, and Dolly. And half the time, others don't see their work as masterpieces or works of art. They see it as a creative outlet, and yeah, that looks good, yeah, I like it, me, nah, not so much. <laughs> so it's really not that big of um, a deal to not be completely happy with your art. But you should always, you know, keep it because it is a way to show your growth. And that's what I'm trying to do with keeping the book intact without tearing out a page. That's really why I didn't do, you know, I didn't want to do the bleed through because I would really, that would affect my OCD a little too much where I would definitely rip the page out and then I would just start ripping pages out and the book would look like, um, Yeah, it would be totally thin and probably like almost anorexic like or like if anyone has seen, you know, has lived through I guess the nineties cartoon, I guess it was Rugrats. It's Cynthia the doll's hair. 
like it's just so sporadic and she barely has any hair it's just sticking out all over the place yeah, that's pretty much what this book would probably look like um but i am i am pretty happy with myself so far it's i know it's only the second filling in sketch in whatever but so far i have restrained myself from ripping anything out of the book you know, i should be able to continue to say that <laughs> And now I'm just drawing some, you know, horizontal lines into the top here. I'm finishing this up, so I'm going to let you guys get a closer look at it. And I hope you like it. Like I said, it's just quick, just throwing some things together. It's not my proudest moment, but hey, it's good. If you like it, please leave me a thumbs up. And subscribe if you haven't already. Here, I'm just going to sign off, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye.